The Lost Caverns Vixalon is now out of spoiler season and we're starting to see our first prices for the set, so I thought it'd be fun to go over and look at the top 10 most expensive cards from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan so you know exactly what to look for if you're cracking any packs. Let's jump right into this. Starting with number 10, it's Bloodletter of Alklazots. It's one black 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 for a 2-4 vampire demon with flying and it says if an opponent would lose life during your turn, they lose twice that much life instead. This reminds me a lot of something like Wound Reflection, which is a pretty good enchantment that doubles up all life loss of your opponents at their end steps. This does it right away, but it only does it on your turn, so there's some, you know, give and pull there, but it's only a 4 drop, and I think for 4 mana, this thing's essentially a 4-4 four, four with flying for 4 that then doubles up everything you do. It seems like something that will be a game ender in a lot of decks, and seems like it'll just be really good if you're trying to win the game by making your opponents lose life, which, believe it or not, most decks are. Either way, it's a pretty powerful card that's going to be a game ender in a lot of places, and because of that, it's going for $13.99 right now. Alright, next up, number 9 is Gishath Sun's Avatar. It's an 8 cost red, green, and white legendary creature 7-6 dinosaur avatar that's actually a reprint from the original visit to Ixalan, but it has Vigilance, Trample, and Haste, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you reveal that many cards from the top of your library, you then put any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This used to be the de facto dinosaur commander. In fact, leading up to Ixalan, before it was announced as a reprint for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, it almost doubled in price with the anticipation being that there'd be a bunch of new dinosaurs and cards that cared about it. So it was going for around 50 bucks before the announcement. It's going to still be a really great dinosaur commander, but we have a lot more options now. You know, we have the dinosaur from the pre-con. We have Owen Grady and Blue as an interesting dino pair, and we just have a lot of really cool dinosaur commanders. So I do think that Gishath is no longer the only amazing option. But despite that, it's still going for $17.99 as a great card and a very scary commander. Next up, number 8 is Bone Horde Dracosaur. It's a 5 cost dinosaur dragon at 5 5 with flying and first strike, which is already really great stats. Then at the beginning of your upkeep, you exile the top 2 cards of your library and you may play them this turn. So essentially, impulse drawing you to every turn. Then if you exile the land this way, you create a 3 1. And if you exile a non land this way, you create a treasure token. Notably, if you exile 2 lands this way, you do not make 2 3 1s. And if you exile 2 non lands this way you don't make two treasure tokens at most if you exiled a land and a non-land you'll make a three one and a treasure but even with that downside this card is insane a five five flying for five that draws you basically two cards every turn creates three one dinosaurs and ramps you with treasure seems like an amazing card and this is going to see play in things like standard it may even see play in things like pioneer and it will be great in a ton of different commander decks whether you care about playing things from exile you want to make tokens or you just want to have a really good value dinosaur dragon this card is going to be crazy and so that's why it's going for $19.99. Next up, number 7 is Chimil the Inner Sun. It's a 6 cost legendary artifact that says spells you control can't be countered and at the beginning of your end step discover 5. This card is another crazy powerful card. First off, it makes it so control magic can't be used to counter your spells, which is always an upside, but then every turn you get to discover five, which is the equivalence of drawing a card and casting it for free. So in a way, it is kind of card draw and ramp, and it's just going to give you some consistent value. Yes, in a commander deck, this might just pull out a soul ring, but it could also pull out any number of cards from your deck, and every turn you get to cast something for free. It's also nice because discover isn't exactly like cascade. If you get something like a counter spell or a board wipe or something you don't want to cast, right now it doesn't do nothing you at least get to draw the card so at its face the worst this says is spells you control can't be countered and at the beginning of your end step draw a card and in colorless in any color you want that is insane but the fact that you could also cast it for free makes this even crazier this card is insane and i expect it to be in a ton of commander decks and it's currently going for $19.99 next up number six is the ancient one it's a blue and a black for an 8-8 eight, eight. yes that's two mana for an 8-8 eight, eight spirit god and it can't attack or block unless there are are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard. Then it has an activated ability. You can pay four mana, one of it being blue, one of it being black, to draw a card, and then discard a card. And whenever you discard a card this way, target player mills cards equal to its mana value. This card seems crazy. If your deck is all about self mill or putting things in the graveyard that you plan on reanimating later, or anything that cares about your graveyard, this is often just a two cost 8 8 that has an activated ability that lets you draw and discard and mill even more. This just seems really good if you care about your graveyard, kind of feeding that 
that theme by both letting you discard cards if you don't want them in your hand, and milling you, and being a big creature, and just doing a ton. This seems like it'll be really good in constructed formats like Standard or potentially Pioneer, where that is very, very impactful. 8 damage is a lot when you start at 20 life, where something in Commander, you know, this is kind of expensive to activate that activated ability, and yes, it's an 8-8, eight, eight, but it doesn't have Trample. This seems more impactful in the non commandery formats, but it's also a Legendary, so I could see some fun decks built around this, where your goal is to get it out really early and then boost it up to try and win with something like Commander Damage. You know, this with Double Strike is almost lethal with Commander Damage, so you just need a little bit of a boost in Double Strike, and this could be kind of a fun Commander. Either way, it's going for $19.99. Next up, number 5 is the Skullspore Nexus. It's an 8 cost, but not really, green legendary artifact, and it costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control, very similar to the Great Henge. Then, whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, you create a green fungus dinosaur creature token, with base power and toughness each equal to the total power of those creatures. Then you can pay 2 and tap it to double target creature's power until end of turn. Now, obviously I compared this to the Great Henge, but it's nowhere near that in power level, however it is still pretty good. All all you need is something with 6 power, and this is a 2 cost artifact that makes it so when something of yours dies, it comes back as a dinosaur. Now the big thing here is that it says one or more creatures die, so if you know 3 of your creatures die and they have total power 12, you're going to make 1 12 12, and it doesn't have trample or anything like that, so you're better off having things die individually. Then you have the ability to double something's power, which you can do at instant speed, which makes it really hard to block, so I think this is a card that is going to be pretty good, but not as universally good as the Great Henge, despite looking very similar as a big legendary artifact that costs less based on your greatest power creature. And while it's not great hinge level, it's still pretty good, and because of that, it's going for $19.99. Next up, number 4 is Galta Stampede Tyrant. This is an 8 cost mono green legendary creature elder dinosaur, 12 12 with trample, and when it enters the battlefield, you can put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. This card is crazy. It's one of the best effects you could ever do on a creature because it gets all the other creatures from your hand onto the battlefield. And the nice thing is, it doesn't say anything about having to cast it or, you know, it has to come from your hand, so that means you can reanimate it from the graveyard. You can put it from your hand onto the battlefield with something like show and tell, and you can flicker it to keep getting the effect. It just seems really crazy. Why choose what creature you're going to cheat into play or, you know, play from your hand when you could play all of them with Galta? I think it's going to be a really fun card, a really cool commander, and great in some constructed formats as well, so I think this thing is going to see a ton of play. Because of that, it's going for $22.99, and I can definitely see why it gets such a high price tag. Next up, number three is Resplendent Angel, a three card cost 3-3 three, three Angel with Flying, and it says at the beginning of your end step, if you gain 5 or more life this turn, you create a 4-4 four, four White Angel creature token with Flying and Vigilance, and then you can pay 6 mana to give it plus 2, plus 2, and lifelink, which will then, if it hits, deal 5 damage and gain you 5 life to create a 4-4. Four, four. So it's a really great just kind of overall value piece in any life gain deck, but it's also just great in kind of a mid-range strategy, allowing you to create lots of Flying Blockers and Attackers, you know, kind of gain some life to keep you in it. It's a very powerful card that was originally in Corset 2019. So actually in the same standard as original Ixalan, but it's now being reprinted into Lost Caverns of Ixalan, and I wasn't aware of the fact that this card crept up so much in price. This card was going for around 40 bucks before the reprint was announced, however it's crept down now because of the announcement of the reprint to only $24.99, which is still pretty crazy for a card in standard, I expect that price will fall a little bit, but this was an amazing card, and I'm curious to see what it'll do in standard this time around. Alright, next up number 2 is O'Hare Tack, Deepest foundation. It's a 6 cost white legendary creature god 6-6 six, six with vigilance, and it says if one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, three times that many of those tokens are created instead. That's a crazy effect, but we'll talk about that more in a second. Then when it dies, you return it to the battlefield tapped and transformed under its owner's control. It becomes Temple of Civilization, which is a land that just taps for white, but then you can pay three and tap it to transform it. You can only do this if you attacked with three or more creatures this turn, and only as a sorcery, but that'll be pretty easy since you made a bunch of tokens per presumably with it on its front face, that then transforms it back into O'Hare Tack. So the idea here is it's very hard to kill the gods, you really want to exile them, otherwise they're going to turn into lands, which then turn back into the gods. But let's actually turn our attention to that ability, because while the resilience is cool, that ability is cooler. Creating triple tokens is something we haven't seen before. You know, obviously we had Mondrak earlier this year, which was a creature that would double up your tokens, and we've had Anointed Procession in the past, which also doubled it up, and, you know, Doubling Season and Parallel Lives also does it. This only does it for creature tokens, which is notable, but it does triple them instead of doubling them, and so I think this card is going to be the most expensive card in the set by the time all of the prices have come down. If I've learned any 
anything from Mondrak and from Anointed Procession and from Doubling Season and Parallel Lives. All of those cards are always expensive. Doubling Season got two reprints this year and its price is still pretty high. You know, not nearly as high as it used to be, but it's still one of the most expensive enchanting tales you can get from Wilds of Aldrain. You know, Mondrak is still one of the most expensive cards from Phyrexia All Be One, and I expect the same will hold here as well. While it is really cool that it triples, it does cost six mana and it doesn't triple up things like clues or treasures, but I still think this card is going to be insane. And that's part of why it's going for $27.99. And it wouldn't shock me if that price actually goes up. A lot of the time I expect these prices to crash and fall. This one might stay the same or even go up a little bit just because effects like this are always popular and almost always expensive. All right. And finally, the most expensive card from the set, the card you are hoping to pull, at least from the main set, it is Cavern of Souls. It's a land that enters untapped all the time and has you choose a creature type as it enters. It taps for colorless, but then it can also tap for mana of any color, and you can spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. But the big thing is then that spell can't be countered, and that's why this card is good compared to something like Unclaimed Territory. Combo decks love this, making their combo pieces uncounterable. This is a card that is really great in older formats and is now entering Pioneer for the first time and will be in standard, so the price on this one could shoot up if it sees play in either of those two formats. It's a really great card, I don't think you need me to tell you that, but the price on it has crashed because of the reprint announcement and is now $34.99. That's still pretty expensive, but I expect this price will go up shortly after Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It really isn't being opened anymore, as now it's going to be in two more formats and could be really good in both of those formats. Alrighty guys, those are the top 10 most expensive cards from the main sets of Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It doesn't include any box toppers or the special guests or the list or Jurassic World cards even. I will be doing separate videos for some of those things, so stay tuned on the channel for those. If you enjoyed and found this video useful, hit that like button and subscribe. And if you want to see more content from me now, check out this video where I talk about what's exactly in a collector booster for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. And check out this video here where I talk about 10 underrated commander cards you should be putting in your decks. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.